Come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with corn and soybean experts about best practices in pest control, ag issues, and how growers can get more from every acre. All you need is a minute. I'm on my way to Purdue University to speak with Associate Professor of Weed Science, Dr. Brian Young, about PPO resistance and the importance of using overlapping residuals both pre and early post emergence. Brian, thanks so much for talking with me today. Good to see you, Jake. So at this point, it's the rare grower who hasn't had resistant weed problems. Very few times have I talked to a grower in the last few years that that's been the case. How did we get to this place? Well, we've just used glyphosate a lot because it's cost effective, simple to use, uh, very efficient at killing weeds. And so we just overused glyphosate. And so we lost the diversity in our weed management programs. Now you've got some examples here of resistant weeds. Could you point them out for us? Yeah, this is water hemp. This happens to be resistant to glyphosate. So this has been a major weed problem throughout the Midwest for the last 20 years or so now, trying to manage this at a higher degree than what we have before. And what about back here? This is mare's tail, also known as horseweed for some. It's glyphosate resistant as well and been a management issue for pre-plant burndown and no-till production. How do you recommend growers manage glyphosate resistant weeds? Well, it's really, don't necessarily have to throw away glyphosate, but certainly integrate another herbicide around glyphosate that can make the overall program effective. And so that's just looking at, you know, things you can use, soar residual herbicides or post emergence tank mix partners for glyphosate. Anything you can do so that we're not allowing more selection pressure on the use of glyphosate. And what about multi-resistant weeds? Well, that's where it gets very complicated because we have glyphosate resistance, but also ALS resistance or PPO resistance in some cases. And so there it gets more complicated, but really we, we need to focus on keeping these different modes of action in the system so that we might have some resistant biotypes like this horseweed where we have ALS and glyphosate resistance. Well, maybe a PPO inhibitor pre-emergence or in the burn down is gonna be effective there. Post-emergence, maybe we have some other options to tank mix with glyphosate to combat resistance. So it has to do with diversification. And speaking of these resistant weeds, why are PPO herbicides, group 14 herbicides, so important and how can we be good stewards in saving that technology? Well, if we were to pick, you know, which herbicides we can use in soybean and have the most activity from a soil residual standpoint at controlling water hemp and palmer amaranth, the PPO inhibiting herbicides, group 14 herbicides, rise to the top. And excluding glyphosate from the post-emergent standpoint, the PPO herbicides, Cobra, Flexstar, Blazer, you know, they were our number one tools for controlling palmer amaranth and water hemp post-emergence in soybean. And how do herbicides like Anthem and Authority play into PPO stewardship? Well, Anthem and Authority, they represent two different groups that I think are critical today. So group 14 herbicides in, in the Authority type products and group 15 in the Anthem products. You know, there's other actives in there too, but that's what I'm focused on right now. Authority products be great in the residual pre-plant burn down for important weed species as Palmer amaranth and water hemp, as well as some others. Post-emergence, you're getting with that uh, group 15 herbicide and anthem, uh, some of that added residual that you can apply after planting, which, you know, that's an important aspect to be successful today. Uh, and I think every weed scientist emphasizing the post-emergence residual. And how do you see PPO herbicides, group 14 herbicides and group 15 herbicides interacting with new seed traits? Well, with future traits that we're talking about, and that might be the Extend, the Enlist, the Balance GT, or some others that are currently under development, all those systems require diversity to be consistent at achieving good weed management. And diversity in terms of using these PPO inhibiting herbicides, group 14s, using group 15s, maybe using a group five like a metribuzin in soybean production. So that's what we're talking about, four, maybe even five different modes of action. That's the diversity we need, not just in Roundup Ready, but in all these future traits. I hear people say that uh, once PPO resistance is encountered, they can't use PPO anymore as, a, as an option. That couldn't be any further from the truth because we've had herbicide resistance in the past. Let's say resistance to atrazine. We haven't thrown that herbicide away. It's still part of an effective weed management system in corn. So the magic is rotating other herbicides around it or diversifying other herbicides around it into an overall program. So in soybeans, PPO inhibiting herbicides still play a role, uh, especially pre-emergence where you have some PPO resistance. So there's still value. It's a matter of finding it and taking advantage of it, but being wary that you do have some of that resistance. Brian, what would you say to a grower who said, you know what, this year I'm just gonna skip using a pre-emergent herbicide? Well, one, I'm gonna hope that I'm not the neighbor. Uh, <laughs> but most of all, you know, what I would tell that growers, for each dollar invested, the best return is on early season weed management. So I, I would beg and plead that they understand that 
you need to protect your crop from weed competition first and foremost. You also need to manage against resistance. Early season weed management accomplishes both those. Just applying Liberty post-emergence is the easy way out, but it's not gonna be sustainable long-term. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you, Jake. As Dr. Young pointed out, it's important for growers to use effective strategies to protect Group 14 PPO herbicides. Implementing multiple effective sites of action, such as Authority Herbicide and Anthem Herbicide in each application is key to this success. So until next time, be safe out there, and I'll see you down the road when you have a minute.